Hey there, I'm Elena with Black Sheep 303 Creative. And just in time for Black Friday, I want to share my thoughts on what electronic cutting machine may be right for you. I know there are a lot of videos out there talking about Cricut versus Silhouette, but not too many that talk about Cricut versus Scan and Cut versus Silhouette. Since I have worked with all three brands of machines for several years, hopefully I can help those of you who may be considering purchasing one of these machines for the first time or possibly expanding your collection. I'm going to focus mainly on the machines that cut 12 inches wide or larger. And we're gonna take a quick informative look at the different brands first. I'm not gonna get into like the super nitty gritty details of each machine. It's going to be a general overview. So I encourage you to do additional research. So let's talk about Scan and Cut. So Scan and Cut is probably the least well known of the cutting machine brands but it does have a very loyal following among stampers, sewers, and quilters. It's manufactured by Brother, who is most known for sewing and embroidery machines, so it's really great cutting fabric. And I'm gonna focus on the DX125E model in the US. It's comparable to the DX135 model, I, I think, in other parts of the world. <laughs> and it, because it's the most popular and it's also the most comparable in features and price to the Silhouette and Cricut machines. There are a number of scan and cut machines, a lot, that feature more built-in designs, more accessories that come with it, and additional capabilities like being able to turn embroidery files into cut files that are more expensive. I'm not gonna go over those, you can research those on your own. But the main features of the scan and cut are an auto sensing technology with the blade to sense the thickness of a material and adjust the pressure and depth automatically. This is also known as an auto blade. And this is the brand of machine that invented that technology that pretty much everybody has now. It can cut materials up to three millimeters thick, just like the Solo Cameo and the Cricut Maker. That includes paper, cardstock, vinyl, fabric, felt, and thicker materials like balsa wood and leather. It has a built-in LCD screen that allows you to move and edit designs right on the machine. So technically, you can make projects with a scan and cut without using a computer because of the built-in designs and fonts that come right on the machine. You can connect the machine wirelessly to your computer or via an included USB cable, and you can also transfer files to the machine with like a USB thumb drive. It does have a software program called Brother Canvas Workspace that allows you to design um, projects and edit projects, including SVGs. The software program also offers a number of cute free projects and you don't have to pay for those or have a membership. You can open SVGs in the software program, but you can only save out of it in the, in the proprietary file type. So that's something to be aware of. The machine has a half cut feature that will prevent you from cutting through the backing on materials like vinyl and sticker paper, one of my favorite things. It has a built-in quarter inch seam allowance setting that can be added when you're cutting fabric. So that is great for sewers and quilters. It is super, super quiet when cutting. By far the quietest cutting machine out there. It cuts a little less than 12 inches by 24 inches with a mat and 12 inches by 70 inches with an added accessory roll feeder. And no mat is needed for backed materials like vinyl. The machine can also draw with pens from Brother as well as other manufacturers and offers additional accessories that allow you to emboss paper pairs, cut rhinestone patterns and more. And there are also many pattern collections available from Brother that even include Disney collections. <laughs> But here's the difference with this machine. It has a built-in 600 DPI scanner. It's the only electronic cutting machine to have this feature and that is what makes it special. So let's talk about the scanner. The scanner allows you to scan the mat through the machine and the machine will save any image placed on the mat. So this is great if you wanna turn like your kid's drawings into stickers or grandma's handwritten recipe into an iron-on design. It eliminates the need for a print then cut feature because you can essentially print images out of any other program, scan them on the mat into the machine and then cut them with, <laughs> with borders or without 
without needing to go into any other program to set everything up, there are no registration marks required. You can also use this feature to scan in stamped images and cut them out with or without adding a border, and there are options on the borders. It eliminates the need to purchase the metal cutting dies that are often sold with stamp sets for this purpose. And it's also a time saver as you can cut out hundreds of stamped images at once rather than running them through a machine by hand over and over again with you know having only one die. You can also add scraps like fabric or paper to a mat. You can scan that through and then you can move the designs around using the LCD screen to place the images over the scraps to make sure that the designs cut out of exactly the right pieces of material. So that's kind of fun. As of November 2022, the Scan and Cut SGX 125E retails for $399.99 in the US. The comparable machine in other parts of the world, I believe, is the Scan and Cut SDX 135, and that retails for around 600 pounds in the UK. I don't know what it is in euros. The SDX 85 is a less expensive DX model, but it can only cut and scan slightly less than 12 by 12. And then there are older CM models that are a lot cheaper, but they lack the auto blade technology. They don't have half cut. They don't have the seam allowance settings. Wireless connectivity is not automatic and you cannot use some of the available accessories in those machines. So if you're interested in any of those models, as well as the more expensive models with additional features, I definitely encourage you to do additional research on your own. I don't see these machines go on sale very often, if ever, unfortunately. The best thing I think to look for when purchasing a, is a package that offers the machine with like added materials and accessories at the same purchase price to make it a better deal. And I've had the best luck with that on hsn.com, Amazon, and swingdesign.com. And if you know of others, please share them in below in the comments. All right, now let's look at the Silhouette Cameo 4, the Cameo Plus, and the Cameo Pro machines. The main features for these machines are, <laughs> they use a dual carriage, with one carriage having the high force or pressure capacity, that it's got the highest force or pressure capacity on the market. And this means that it should be able to cut even more materials that are up to three millimeters thick. It cuts all of the standard materials like paper, cardstock, vinyl, fabric, as well as felt, balsa wood, and obviously other thicker materials. It also uses an auto blade, but it requires, in my opinion, more finesse of the settings in the software to you know, get the best results with that auto blade. You can connect via Bluetooth to your computer or with the included USB cable. It has a built-in roll feeder, which is very nice for long material and a cross cutter on the back that allows you to trim off materials once you've fed them into the machine. So that's very nice. No additional purchase of a feed, roll feeder. You can cut on the mat or matless with the built-in roll feeder on any of the Cameo machines. And they all have print and cut abilities in the software, of course. The machines can also draw with pens from Silhouette as well as other manufacturers and, off and offers additional accessories like a rotary blade, a punch tool, and a craft blade for thicker materials. There are also third-party accessories that will allow you to engrave, as there are for the scan and cut as well. The machines work with, as I've been mentioning, the software program called Silhouette Studio, which has a free version and then three paid tiers in addition that offer additional file types that you can open and or save as and additional features. It's a very powerful software program and that will allow you to design your own SVG files, but it does have a learning curve. So you're gonna need a paid version to open SVG files and the highest tier of the paid versions to save as SVGs out of the program. So the main difference between the Cameo 4, the Cameo Plus and the Cameo Pro is the width that the machine can cut. So the Cameo 4 can cut up to 12 inches wide by 24 inches long on a mat, or 12 inches by 10 feet long with the roll feeder. 
the Cameo Plus can cut up to 14.6 inches wide by 24 inches long with a mat and 14.6 wide by 10 feet long with the roll feeder. And finally, the Cameo Pro can cut up to 24 inches wide uh, by 24 inches long with a mat and 24 inches wide by 10 feet with the roll feeder. Obviously, the machines are physically larger, the wider the material they can cut, so the space you have to store and use the machine may need to be a consideration. And these are the only machines that can cut that wide, so the Plus and the Pro. The Cameo 4, as of November 2022, retails for around $300, the Plus for about $400, and the Cameo Pro for around $500. The machines and accessories are often on sale and the paid software tiers often go on a discount too, especially, uh, especially around Black Friday. For example, I purchased my Cameo 4 and my software upgrade to Business Edition from Swing.com and I got really good deals on both. I did not pay full retail for either of those. There are also older versions of the Cameo, basically like the Cameo 3, that can be found for less but they, it lacks the high force carriage. It can only cut up to two millimeters thick and it's slower than the newer four models. And then there's the Portrait 3. It's also a less expensive cutting machine, but it has similar limitations and it can only cut up to eight inches wide. So something to think about. All right, finally, let's look at the features of the Cricut machines. Cricut is really the big kahuna in the electronic cutting machine industry. Uh, by my, you know, uneducated estimates, I would guess that it's probably 50% or more of the market, um, and it offers a fairly wide array of machines. So the Explore Air and the Maker machines are the most comparable to the Scan and Cut DX and the Silhouette Cameo machines. So I'm going to be talking mostly about those. The main features of those machines are now Explore Air machines. There are two versions. They can cut up um, like 100 or more thinner materials, including paper, cardstock, vinyl, and bonded fabrics. It can draw with a variety of Cricut pens. It can score and it can also foil. They have print and cut capabilities from the software program. Um, the Explorer 2 can cut up to 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches with a mat. Cricut says it cannot cut without a mat. The Explore Air 3, on the other hand, can cut the same dimensions with a mat, but it can also cut 13 inches wide by 75 feet long with matless smart materials. Explore Air 3 machines are also up to two times faster at cutting than the Explore Air 2 models, so faster and matless. Now, all Cricut machines must be used with Cricut Design Space, the software program. It's free to use, but some of the features and most of the projects require a paid, ten, like about $10 a month Cricut Access membership. I personally just use the free version. I don't have any problem with that, but that's up to you. The Access projects and features are nice, so you may decide that it's worth it for you to join that. Something to think about. Now, maker machines can cut up to 300 or more materials, including all the same ones, paper, cardstock, fabrics, felt, but also balsa wood, leather, and materials that are up to three millimeters thick. It's similar to the scan and cut and cameo machines. It can also draw with a variety of Cricut pens. It can score with both single and double scoring wheels that are extra. It can foil, it can deboss, engrave, and more with extra accessories. It also has print and cut capabilities through the software. The original maker, which is this guy, can cut up to 11 and a half inches by 23 and a half inches long with a mat. And again, Cricut says it cannot cut without a mat. The maker three can cut the same amount with a mat, but it can also cut 13 inches wide by 75 feet long with matless smart materials. And just like Explore Air 3, the Maker 3 can cut two, up to two times faster than the original Maker. So just like the Explore Air machines, Maker machines require the use of the Cricut Design Space software to use it. Both series of machines have a lot of accessories, tools, and materials that are available for it from Cricut. As of November 2022, the Explore Air 2 machines retail for $199. Explore Air Three machines retail for $319. Original Maker models retail for as low as $249. I saw that at Michael's. Now Michael's has them on clearance, although they are apparently not being discontinued, so no worries there. Maker Three machines retail for $429. 
The machines are often on sale and as are the accessories at both retail and online locations. And Michaels and Joann's in the US right now both have good sale prices as of the filming in November 2022. And Black Friday sales are also a great time to purchase one of these machines. So what is my bottom line opinion on these machines and who do I recommend them to? First, I'll give you my pros and cons for the scanning cut. So the pros, it is a super, super quiet machine. Definitely the quietest machine on the market. It has a scanner. If you're gonna use that scanner, there is nothing like it. It's amazing. Cuts a lot of materials, just the same as the Maker and the Cameo, um, pretty easily, although I do have an exception that I'll talk about in a minute. The machine itself is really well made and heavy duty. It can be used without the software or a computer, although there is a learning curve to using just the machine as there is to also the software program. The free software program can open SVG files and it has cute free projects, like no membership required. The cons are that it's kind of expensive. Both the machine and the consumables, especially like mats, are extremely pricey, like $35 for a mat. I personally had to have a lot of problems cutting vinyl with the auto blade. So I had to purchase the vinyl auto blade for $60 and it works great with that. But you know, that's unfortunately something I had to, had to purchase extra accessories to make it totally work the way it should. It also has some strange cutting patterns. So I'm a big, I design a lot of card designs and I've noticed that when the scan and cut is cutting things out, it will cut the outside edge of a design first and then cut like the detailed insides. Now that probably sounds like not that big a deal, but if your mat isn't very sticky, um, what can happen is <laughs> once it cuts the outside edge, that kind of makes the, the cardstock just free. It's just floating on the top of the, of the non-sticky mat. So as it cuts, it moves around and you can, you know, and it doesn't stay in place and you can't get a good cut. And that happens quite frequently, unfortunately for me. The other two brands of machines do the opposite. They cut the inside pattern first and the outside edges last. So just something to be aware of. The Canvas Workspace software program is a bit limited and cumbersome, especially when like cutting and sending mats to the machine. And you can't save SVG files from the software. And I wanna explain that the way you send designs to the machine, you have to put things on the mat in the software program and then export them to the machine, cut them out of the machine, then go back to the software change our like pull things off the mat put the new things on the mat export it to the machine retrieve it on the machine cut it again and you go back and forth like that and if you have a lot of colors that you're wanting to cut that can get kind of long and tedious so just be aware of that <laughs> and then because it is the least popular of the machines there are limited there are a limited number of like video tutorials youtube videos and classes that you can um, access in which to help you learn the machine. Now there are some and they are great. Um, I have some on my channel. So just be aware of that. Um, you may have to search a little bit to find uh, resources to help you. And it can also be kind of hard to find where to buy the machine, especially the higher end machines where that requires like a sewing machine dealer. So who do I think it's great for? I think it's great for people who stamp and don't want to invest the time and money into dyes anymore. It's perfect for that. It's, it'll save you time and money eventually. It's great for quilters and sewers. It does really amazingly well with fabric. It's great for anyone who wants to turn draw, personal drawings or mementos into cut files using the scanner. It's also great for people who make stickers and don't have the patience to deal with more complicated print than cut settings found in other programs. Again, you can just use the scanner. So anybody basically who's going to get use out of the scanner, this machine is for them. All right, what are my pros and cons for the Silhouette Cameo? So the pros are, it's actually a pretty good price. Both for the machines and the accessories are reasonably priced. And it cuts a lot of materials once you find the proper settings for those materials in the software program. And usually that's not too tough. 
The software program is extremely powerful and can do a lot, especially when it's upgraded to a paid version. And really it's often on sale, both the machine and the accessories are almost always on some kind of discount. And it's pretty easy to find where to buy, both online and retail locations are pretty easy to locate. And there's a decent amount of like third party tutorials, classes, guides, etc. available to learn the machine and help you with the software program. Now the cons. I think it's kind of flimsy construction. Like to me, it feels like this cover is going to break like any minute and it's really kind of light. The Bluetooth connection is iffy. Like I've had a lot of problems with the Bluetooth connection and you may have to replace the Bluetooth transmitter on it, which isn't that hard, but it's kind of a pain. There aren't a lot of things to do with the super powerful carriage. Like maybe that'll change in the future, but right now it doesn't seem like there's a real advantage to that. I think the software program, while awesome, is also extremely intimidating for newbies. And like the scan and cut, cutting from the software involves a lot of going back and forth and it can be a little bit cumbersome. So who do I think the Cameo is, correct, is great for? Well, I think it's for, great for people who are on like a bit of a budget because none of these like machines are cheap, but you want to cut the widest array of materials possible for the least amount of money. It's also great for people who are somewhat tech savvy and aren't going to be intimidated by the software program that I think can be kind of overwhelming for, for brand new people to the electronic cutting machine world. It's also great for people who want to create and test cutting their own SVG files, but do you don't want to invest in like a super expensive program like Illustrator. The Plus and the Pro are great for anyone who needs to cut designs larger than 12 inches, honestly, you know. If you had to, like if I were going to buy one of the larger machines, I would probably buy the Pro because the Plus doesn't really offer that much extra width. It's only 14 and a half inches versus the Cameo's 12, but you know, that's just me. I don't have space for either one of those. All right, so where are my pros and cons for the Cricut machines? Cricut accessories are pretty reasonably priced and they are often on sale, as are the machines, almost always. Um, it cuts lots of materials pretty easily once you find the proper settings and that's not super difficult to do because there are a large menu of presets in Cricut Design Space to help you with that. The Maker Series in particular, cuts and graves to bosses, etc., with accessories on most material, like on more materials than I really think most people would ever really need to use or even try. <laughs> uh, Cricut Design Space, honestly, it's constantly improving and adding features without becoming too overwhelming. Is it perfect? No. Um, but I think it's user friendly. Um, it's pretty easy to upload SVG files to Cricut Design Space and just use them for no extra charge. The cutting interface between the software and the machines is by far the easiest to use. <laughs> the program walks you through it without too much back and forth, even with the joy where you're required to use the software to control the machine. So kudos on that. There are lots and lots of tutorials and third-party classes and information available about any of the Cricut machines that are both free and paid, so there are many resources available for you to learn things. Honestly, aesthetically, I think it's the best looking, and they are also very heavy-duty and well-made machines. And they're very easy to find, both the machines and the accessories, um, pretty much available, it seems like, almost anywhere. So the, so the cons. Cricut machines can seem expensive, especially the newest models, like the three models. But realistically, they're comparable to other brands like, you know, Scan and Cut and the new Caesar Juliet. I've had some hit or miss uh, service from Cric Cricut customer service, and they do seem extremely strict about warranty claims. So keep that in mind. You have a one year warranty on all these. The preset material settings in Cricut Design Space, I think, require some adjustment for me particularly with cardstock since those presets are designed to work with Cricut brand materials specifically and not general ones so you might have to tweak those settings and that can be a little tough initially. The paid Cricut access membership is needed to use all the projects and the fonts and some of the functions like certain shapes and the monogram creator in Cricut Design Space which is kind of unfortunate. And 
Honestly, Creek Design Space is somewhat limited and like personalizing or creating your own designs, depending on how complicated you want them, can I think be easier in some other programs. Now you also cannot save projects out of Cricut Design Space at all. Like once you make them there, you have to save them there and that's where they live. I've also had a lot of problems as have others with the Bluetooth connection between my maker and my Mac computer, which is really annoying. So who do I think Cricut machines are for? Honestly, and I'm a little sad to say it because I like underdogs and Cricut is by far not an underdog. <laughs> I do think Cricut machines are the best machines for non-techie beginners in the electronic cutting, mach cutting machine world. I think um, the Explore Air 2 model is great for people who want to cut thinner materials only, like paper, vinyl, and you know bonded fabrics. They don't need to cut leather. You don't need to cut balsa wood and those kinds of things. You're fine just making like t-shirts and cards and those kinds of projects. And you don't care about being able to cut matless or really, really long lengths. Then I think you can easily save yourself quite a bit of money and just go with an Explore Air 2. If cutting really long lengths, like long porch signs or wall vinyl or those kinds of things, and you really need that matless cutting, then obviously you want to go with the Explore Air 3. Now, in terms of the most expensive machines, the maker will cut tons of extra materials. So if it's important to you to either be able to do that right away or to learn how to do that in the future, then I would say consider buying a maker or a maker 3. Now, I think the Maker 3 is only necessary if, again, those long cuts are important to you and being able to cut malice, as well as the increased speed. Otherwise, I think you can cut, you could save some money and just purchase the original Maker. All of these machines are good and buying one of these machines is honestly, it's an investment of not just money, but time. Even with the easiest and simplest machines, there is still a learning curve so patience is required with both yourself and whatever machine you decide to try. It, I tell you, it is inevitable that you're going to have materials that don't cut correctly the first time. You're going to want to do something with a design and not be able to figure out how to do it easily. You will probably have to watch some YouTube videos or read some blog posts to get the hang of things initially with any of these machines but that's completely normal and to be expected. So cut yourself a break. <laughs> this is really, really a fun crafting world you're diving into. And I want to encourage you to be kind to yourself and your machine while you learn to make all the fun things you want. You can do it. So don't give up. Now let me know in the comments if you found this helpful and what, if any kind of machine you decided to buy. And if you know of additional sources, good sources for various machines, please share those with others as well. I'd love it if you give my video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more project tutorials using Cricut, Scanicut, and Silhouette machines. Thanks and happy holidays.